Hello, I am back with another corner to corner pattern for you guys. So this one is very similar to my Daisy Day throw, but this time it's lemons. So I'm really excited for this one. You guys loved the Daisy Day and I'm so excited for the lemon one. So let me show you. Got a little lemon guy here. Got one up in the corner. Show you the middle one. Ooh, it's gonna be kind of big for this video but you get the idea. Lemons everywhere on this really pretty frost color um, yarn. So I used Lion Brand's Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling Yarn for this. Same with the Daisy Day, if you are familiar with that pattern. And then a five millimeter hook. So this is the same size as that blanket as well. Um, and then the free pattern for it is on my blog. So I have the graph available on my blog as well as the um, written pattern row by row listing out the squares and colors. Um, and then this is also available as a line brand yarn kit. So you can get the kit and the kit comes with all of the yarn that you need to make your blanket. Um, plus they throw in a free pattern. So you get the pattern as well. You'll get it, um, in a PDF. They send a digital download so you can have that and print it out ad free instead of viewing it on my blog. And then, um, that same thing is also available on my Etsy and Ravelry shop. So you can get the printable PDF there as well. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything specific you need to know about this pattern. Not a whole lot in the in the tutorial. I'm making um, just a small swatch so you guys can see how to do it. If you already know corner to corner, you're not gonna need this tutorial. Um, but if you're new to corner to corner, I show you guys how to start the pattern. So I'll show you like how to start off the first few rows. I'll show you how to bring in a new color yarn. I'll show you a few different ways to change out the yarn color and switch it um, and then the biggest part where people usually um, make a mistake on corners corners if they are new to them is the very first corner so I don't know why it's so confusing to a lot of people but when you hit that for very first corner sometimes people um, don't realize that's when you start decreasing up the side instead of extending the blanket wider so I show you how to do that and then I show you how to do it in the upper corner as well um, and then I show you how to finish off the blanket so it's just a small little um, swatch here that I did for the video but uh, if you're new to corner to corner it'll definitely help um, so I'll link to everything in the description if you want to get the kit or the printable pattern um, and I hope you guys like the pattern I'm so excited for this one and um, yeah I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in the next So video. for our lemon blanket, you're going to need a worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brand's Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling. And then you're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook and a needle and some scissors. And you can find the color names and yardage on my blog. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a small swatch on how to do a corner to corner. Obviously, I'm not going to have time to work up this entire blanket, but I'm going to be showing you the important parts here and how to make the blanket, including changing colors, how to start working the corners and everything you need to know. So for this blanket, we're going to be starting in the bottom right corner and we work the um, blanket diagonally. And for this particular one, you will be reading the rows from right to left. So all the odd rows right to left and all the even rows from left to right. So you're going to grab your hook and create a slip knot. So just wrap the yarn around your fingers, pull the yarn through the loop and then insert your hook into that loop and pull tight to secure. And then we're going to be starting off with row one where I showed you on the graph. So to start off the blanket, you're going to be chaining six. So just yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook a total of six times. And now we're going to be working our very first square. So in that fourth chain from the hook, you're gonna rotate it just slightly and insert your hook into the back bump, working a double crochet stitch. So I'll show you that again, yarn over, insert your hook into the following stitch. Now you're in the fifth chain from the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then again, work a third double crochet in that very last chain for a total of three double crochet. So we have our um, turning chain on the end and then three double crochet stitches and this creates the first row or row one, which is the first square. 
And then you're just going to turn your work and again, chain six, and this starts row two. So what you're going to be doing the same thing in the fourth chain from the hook, you're gonna work a double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into that back, back bump of the fourth chain, and then just work a double crochet stitch. Again, yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then work your third double crochet into that last chain. Make sure you don't accidentally skip that one. So again, you have a total of three double crochet that you just did, and that is the first square of the second row. And then this is what um, our regular squares will look like throughout into that space of the first square that you made. You're just going to slip stitch into it. That slip stitch is in to join. And now to work just a normal square in the pattern, you chain three. So instead of chaining six, you just chain three, and then work three more double crochet all into the same spot. So that was our second square of row two, and you can see we have two squares total. We have our corner square from row one, and then two more squares for row two. And then to start the next row, you're just going to be doing the same thing. You're gonna begin with chaining six. So this is how we're gonna start off every row until we um, reach the corners. So at chain six, and then work a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then work a second double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook, and then work a third and final double crochet into that very last chain. So again, chain six and three double crochet that starts off the row, then do the same thing as before, slip stitch into the next square and do a normal square like you just did, chain three, three double crochet, slip stitch into the last one, chain three, three double crochet. So that is what your rows will look like. And now I'm going to show you guys how to change colors and um, switch from color to color um, in the pattern. So again, this is just a little swatch. So this is not the exact um, graph and pattern for the blanket, but if you need to bring in a color on the um, edge square, instead of yarning over and pulling through with the green color, you will drop the yarn and place your new yarn on your hook and just pull through with that. So you can see I've placed my yellow yarn on my hook and did the final pull through of that last double crochet with the yellow. So now our working yarn is the yellow yarn and then you can just continue like normal. I've chained six, six to do the increase square and then just work the double crochets like we have been. And then um, you can just continue like normal for the squares within the rows of the pattern which is again, slip stitching into the chain space from the row below. So I'll show you again how to do it here. You're just going to slip stitch in to that next row or into that next space of the row below and then um, work your next square. So again, you will only be chaining six if you are on the edge of the blanket. So the squares um, within the row, you just slip stitch in, chain three, three double crochet. Um, because when you're doing the increases, you only do them on the outer edges of the blanket. So you can just continue along with your squares, um, changing colors where it shows in the graph. And I will show you how to switch back and forth colors here as well. So say you want to bring in the frost color again, instead of yellow. Um, so it depends on where you are at in the graph and you need to decide whether you'll be bringing in a new skein of yarn, a new small ball of yarn, or if you want to pick your yarn back up. So here I'm going to show you how to bring in a new skein. So if you're separated by the yellow and you have two spots where you're going to be doing color A, then you'll wanna have separate balls of yarn so that you don't have to cut and join. So you can see I just placed the new yarn on my hook and did that pull through with it and then slip stitch into the next and I just drop the yellow and we'll leave the yellow there so that we can pick it back up on our way down and switch colors easily again. So you want to always keep your yarn attached as often as possible so that you don't have to continue to cut and join because then you'll have more ends to weave in. Um, so I'll show you different ways how you can pick the yarn back up. 
Also, I wanted to point out when you're bringing in new yarn, keep your tails all to the same side so that your blanket will be nice and neat and you can just weave in your ends all on the wrong side of the blanket. Okay, so now let's say that you need to pick the yellow yarn back up and work a yellow square in the next spot. I'm going to show you how to do that without cutting and rejoining your yarn. There will be some places where you can't get away from having to cut and join, so you'll have to weave in the ends, but that's totally okay. And I'm going to show you how to do it without cutting as well. So we're just going to do our last yarn over with the yellow yarn. So I've just tucked my um, frost color yarn out of the way and I'm holding it down with my thumb and then just place the yellow yarn onto my hook and do that last um, pull through with the yellow yarn because that's what we are switching to. And so you'll see that it creates the strand being stretched across. You wanna make sure that you leave that length of yellow being stretched across the same length as the side of a double crochet stitch so that your work is not puckering um, or being pulled too tightly. And then you just pull the frost um, color down slightly to make sure it's nice and secure, not a sloppy stitch. You can see me doing it there. And then just slip stitch in to the chain space like you would any regular square and chain three. And now you're going to work your double crochet stitches directly over that yarn to hide it underneath the stitches. And that helps so that you have less ends to weave in as you go. So you can see this is what it looks like all hidden underneath the stitches. And then I will show you the front side as well so you can see that it is hidden under. So just slip stitch into the next. Here's what it looks like on the front of the blanket. You can't even tell that we've just pulled the yarn through and stitched directly over it. So then you can just keep going as normal. And that was one way how to change colors just depending on where the color change is in the graph. Okay, so I've worked my way back down and now let's say that the graph calls for you to switch back to the frost color. Instead of doing your last yarn over and pull through with the yellow, you'll just drop it. This time it's to the back side of our work. And then we will just pick up the frost color. You can see it's still attached because I haven't cut it. And then we're just gonna place it on the hook and do the last pull through with the frost. And then make sure you tug down the yellow yarn to make your stitch neat. And now our working yarn is the frost color and you continue as normal, slip stitching into the next square and working your regular square. And so for this point of the graph, you can cut and join if the square is in this position and calls for a color change. I prefer to just uh, bring in the color and join. You can see it does leave a float of yarn along the back of your work here, but I find once you do it like this for every single change that's in this position, it really doesn't look bad at all. It's all on the back of your work and it doesn't bother me in the slightest. It could be different for you. You might want to cut and join, but then you'll just have a lot more ends to weave in and I love doing it this way. Instead, I'll show you what it looks like at the uh, end, I'll show you the back of my blanket and how it really doesn't look bad at all. So that was another way how to do a color change. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to do the first corner of the blanket. So let's pretend that we are coming up on row 60 of our graph. So let's say we just finished row 59 and the next row is row 60 and I will show you how to decrease. So because row 60 is an even number, it's going to start off just like any other one of your increase rows. So this is the beginning of row 60. And remember the corner square at row 60 is our um, last square at that bottom corner of the blanket. So you're going to chain six and then just work your square as normal. So that part is exactly how we have been doing it, but that is the last time that you are increasing on this side of the blanket. So that was as far out as we are gonna go on this edge of the blanket, and that square that I just made was our very corner square of the blanket and that very corner square of the graph as well when you look at the um, corner to corner graph in the pattern. So now all of the squares are gonna be stacked on top of this and working our way up on the side of the blanket. 
So you can keep going as normal down to the end. And because this side of the blanket, we are still increasing and working our blanket taller. So we aren't de decreasing on this side of the blanket yet. So just continue as normal. Work your final square and then work your regular increase square to start off. So again, chain six, work your double crochet, and then I will show you um, the other side of the blanket once we reach back to the end. So I'm still working my way down and I thought I would just show another color change. So we're gonna place in our frost color, do that last pull through with it, tug on the yellow yarn, and then we have our float going along here and then we're just going to work directly over it. So slip stitch in to the square and then chain three and work your three double crochet st stitches directly over that little float to hide it underneath. So again, just another color change. So now we're coming up on the last square of the row because we have reached the corner. So here is how you finish it off. We're going to slip stitch in to that next space, chain three and work three double crochet just the same as normal. And then instead of slip stitching into the square and increasing, we are going to slip stitch into that corner square and decrease up the side. So here is our corner square at the bottom. You're just gonna slip stitch into it and then turn your work. And then you're just going to slip stitch up the side of the square that we just made. So in each of those double crochet stitches, you're just going to slip stitch into them. So one slip stitch into the first and then work a second slip stitch and then a third. And then you're just going to slip stitch into the chain space of the square. And now you're just going to do your normal square like you would inside the rows of the pattern. So just chain three and three double crochet and you can continue along as normal, slip stitching into the next square, chain three, three double crochet. And you're just going to do this all the way across and I will show you what it looks like. So now you can see that the squares are stacking on top of each other instead of um, increasing out in width. We're just going to work our way up now and decrease these squares. So I will show you how to do this on the other side as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you another color change. I'm gonna drop my frost color on the side closest to me on the back end of the work, pick up the yellow, and then just slip stitch in. Again, you can see it leaves the little float, and I will show you what that looks like at the end. And then just continue on as normal, and here is where I will show you another decrease of the blanket, the upper right-hand corner decrease. So let's say that this square that we're making right now is the very last square or corner of the upper right side of the blanket and that would be row 68 in the pattern so let's say this is the very end of row 68 and you just made that last square so then you're just going to turn your work and decrease up the sides so we just made the corner square of row 68 we finished this row and that was the last one then you just slip stitch up the side, slip stitch into the chain space, and now you're just working these decrease squares on the end on both sides of the blanket instead of just one. So I'm running out of yarn here, but this upper square that we just made, that is the upper right hand corner and you can see the bottom corner down here. And now with each row that you do, you are decreasing by one square count as you go. So you're just gonna continue doing your normal squares in the middle and then when you get to the end, you just slip stitch, turn, slip stitch up the side and decrease all the way um, until you get to the very last row of the blanket. So I'll just show you again what you do when you get back. So I've worked my way down and back, and then I'm just gonna show you one more time this decrease. So we're working our last square of the row here. So we just slip stitched in, chain three, three double crochet, and then I'm just going to slip stitch into the last square of the previous row, and then just turn my work, and then chain three, or excuse me, slip stitch three up the side. So one, two, and three, and then one more slip stitch into the chain space. 
And then that is where you chain three and three double crochet. So just do this throughout the rest of the pattern. There will obviously be a lot more rows in the actual blanket pattern that I'm showing here, but you just decrease and work your squares. And then I will show you guys how to finish off the blanket um, and what to do in the final row. Okay, so I'm coming up to the last row of my blanket and I have slip stitched in and then I turned my work. I'm slip stitching up the side here and then we're just going to work our final square. So slip stitch into the chain space, chain three, and then work three double crochet and that is the last square of the blanket. And to finish off, it's very simple. You just slip stitch in to the chain space from that previous row, turn your work, and then you can just slip stitch up the side and then just fasten off your work. And that is it for the blanket. If you want, you can add a border by working in the round and just um, using any stitch you want to work around the blanket, or you can just leave it as is. Real quick, I just wanted to show on the graph how you would bring in different balls of yarn. So when you start off, you just need one ball of frost, but then when you get to changing colors, you'll need a ball of yellow and then a ball of frost for the center in between the lemon and the leaf.